Hey guys, so in the group poll for the DIY spell jar video, protection actually won. Um, so in this video, we are gonna build a protection jar. Um, I am only gonna do it with things that I can find in my house, like in my kitchen, my you know kitchen spices, stuff like that. Things that are on my property, that grow on my property. But for the basic beginner, don't gotta spend a lot of money. You can go outside and find stuff in your yard to make this work. Um, so let's get started. Let's uh, look up some herbs and, and oils and stuff and see what's gonna go in this jar. Um, so I'm gonna go do some research and we'll see what we come up with. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Oh my God, slow down. You're scrolling way too fast and I can't keep up. Um, I spent several hours researching last night, so I just want to show you part of my process here, but definitely look some things up for yourself and see what you can find for your jar. So after I double checked my herbs and spices and decided that uh, those are the ones that I was going to use, I decided to look up different um, incense and oils and crystals um, just to see what else I could add into this jar um, just to give it a, a little bit of an extra boost. You also don't have to use crystals. Like, say you don't have any crystals, come outside and, and find some rocks, um, some neat rocks that you like. Um, they don't have to be anything specific. Look, there's some little black ones in here, but we'll grab the black ones. And just whichever ones kind of stand out to you. There we go. I like that. Let's go with that. And then, look, I have an overgrown plant bed here. Uh, um, look, I've got some morning glories growing back here. Um, I forget what this is. I think it's boxwood. I'll have to confirm that with an app. Let's see. Those ones are dead. That came right off. We'll take that. So we'll look up the, that plant and see what we have. And then I've got these lovely big ash trees. I already know they're ash trees because I've looked it up before. And so look, I've got some fallen twigs here. We'll, we'll take this and we'll, we'll put this in our jar too. Um, and we'll look up the properties of ash. Oh my god, guys, I forgot to tell you about grass. You can definitely use grass. So, I've got some rocks in here too, I think. Now we need something to put it in. As you can see, I have plenty of jars to pick from. I think this looks for salsa, so let's scrub this label off. And now we're ready to go. So I finally put all of my ingredients together uh, for this jar. We are now a half a day later, a shower, a nap, and caffeine later. So basically what I'm trying to say is this isn't, don't just throw stuff in a jar and cross your fingers and hope it works. You still have to do the work, you still have to do the research. Um, and then, like I was exhausted, I had to take a break. So now we're back. We're wearing Batman now because, you know, protection. Um, anyway, so let's go through what I uh, acquired, what I've gathered from my kitchen, from my home, 
from my yard. Um, we are going to start here. Let's start with the herbs. Um, so I have clove. Um, clove is good for um, driving away hostile energy and negative forces. Oh, we also have salt. Of course, we have salt. Um, a note on the salt, if you do plan on burying this, I would probably skip the salt. Salt is very um, harmful to, to plant life. Um, if it's an area you don't care anything's going to grow, okay I guess, but it can take years for the, the soil to recuperate from salt. So if you're ever doing um, like a biodegradable um, jar or whatever um, and you bury it, you might consider skipping the salt. Don't put salt in the ground. Anyway, um, then we have garlic to help drive away hostile and negative forces. Cinnamon here um, is protective and it also um, can help rev up any uh, type of magic, so it's just a little booster. Ginger, um, also a booster, um, so you know we want this to work. And then we have parsley, which is associated with power, strength, purification, and prosperity. Um, I believe lust as well, but you know, we, we need it for its strength right now. And then rosemary. Um, this can be used as a substitute for frankincense. Um, frankincense is uh, protective. You may see it listed a lot in um, spell jar recipes. Um, but if you don't have frankincense, you can definitely use rasme uh, raspberry, rosemary. Um, some other things, so things I collected outside. We've got a baggie of grass here. Um, the grass is protective and cleansing or healing. Um, and it's so common that it's something that we don't even think about. Like, oh, it's grass, whatever. But it's protective, and guess what? It's also grounding. So we will definitely be using that. Um, then we have, what else do I have here? Um, crystals and stones. Um, so I did this video with the assumption that you have nothing to work with, okay? So um, I've collected some rocks from outside, some little pebbles. Um, I picked up a few little black ones because black stones are always protective. Um, and then just some other ones that I really liked. So we will be including these as well. Then, so researching the plant life in my yard, um, I have an ash tree outside. So I took a twig that had fallen off of my tree and snapped it a couple times. We have three pieces. Three is good to work with, so we're going to go with that. Um, my, oh, sorry, ash is um, protective and strong. Um, then boxwood, this was the, the shrubs in front. I have a few of the little fallen branches here, um, but then I also decided to go ahead and do a little clipping, and I don't know if you can tell, we've got like an abandoned spider web in here, and spiders are your friends, like they're protective and their webs catch things before they can enter your home, so I really want to include that in there. Um, some other things you can include, which um, I don't normally, you can actually include bodily fluids. You can spit in it, you can urinate in it. It's like marking your territory. I don't normally do that. Um, so you could add other fluids in here. It's for something like this, I would probably go with some sort of oil, um, olive oil, grapeseed oil, um, stuff like that, almond oil, I don't know, whatever you have a lot of. Um, you could also use alcohol, so I would suggest like a at least 70% um, rubbing alcohol, or you could do like vodka or Everclear. Um, I prefer things clear, that way you know I can see everything in there. You could also do essential oils. So I actually got some oils in my gift exchange. This is rosemary. So I'm going to add a few drops of rosemary in there, um, mostly because I like, I like the way it smells. Smells so good. <laughs> you are going to make a petition to put in here. Your petition is your intent. What is your purpose 
for doing this? Are you just throwing a bunch of crap in a jar and making a wish? Or are you gonna tell it to do something? You put everything in the jar and they're in there like, okay, what do we do? You have to tell it what you want it to do. So this is for protection, right? So you're gonna write out your peti petition. Um, so I put, my family and I are safe and protected. And then I realized this was wrong. Why is this wrong? Am I protecting my whole family? Am I protecting my, you know, extended family? Am I really going to protect all of those? Like, your energy is going into this, too. I'm, I'm sorry, but I only have enough energy to protect what is right here. So, we redid it. Those who dwell in this home are safe and always protected. So this is protecting my immediate energy, is protecting those in my home to include my pets and my friends who come into my house. This is a safe space. So this is my protective bubble for my home, okay? I have some ash and I think there's tobacco in here. I think that's tobacco. Um, this is from a previous ritual. So I'm gonna include this. You can also include things um, I've got some wax in here as well from a um, bottle that I've actually been working on all year. And so I want to take that energy and I want to put it in here too. So you can also do that. Um, other things that you've found, um, things that you connect with. Um, so I have a bone here that I'm going to include. Um, and now bones are good for banishing and they also connect you to spirit. Um, black kyanite, so again, black stones are protective, um, a very good um, healing, like cleansing protective stone here. Um, nails, I've rather gathered some nails. So just three little nails here that I'm going to include, and nails are good for defense. So, and then we've got eggshells, ground eggshells, so good for protection and banishing negative energy. So we're going to use some eggshells as well. So you don't have to cast a circle for work like this. You definitely can if it makes you feel better, um, but this is more of a passive energy. You're not directly connecting to anything, so it's not necessary to, to make a circle. Um, like I said, you can. You can also invite your um, guides and your angels and your deities to join you at this point um, to kind of help give you a little extra boost while you do your working. Um, but we're, uh, I'm just going to, I'm using Palo Santo. Um, primarily because it's cleansing and it removes the negative energies, but it also helps bring in good en energy. Um, I'm just going to go over. I've got all my items here in front of me. And so I'm just going to clear everything. I like to go counterclockwise for clearing and then clockwise for bringing in. So we're going to clear out all the funk and then we're going to welcome good energy in. Okay, so now we need to charge it. Like I said, you can't just put stuff in here and expect it to know what to do. You have to cleanse and charge your items before you put them in. Now you can do this one at a time or you can um, kind of do everything as a whole. So I'm just going to kind of smush all my stuff here. I don't have a lot of space to work with. So now we need to give it an intention. So like I said, you can go through one item at a time, or you can envision your whole space here. Um, what I like to do is to visualize. Um, so when you do this, you are creating energy. So you can rub your hands together, um, but you're making that friction, you're making that heat. I feel nice and tingly now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start small and I'm going to envision a bubble of light or energy. I know some of you are probably Naruto fans, you know, pic picture that ball, okay? That spinning ball. And you can feel it, really feel it. And you're gonna start small. 
and you're going to feel that energy between your hands. And when you really feel like it's getting going, you're going to hold it and you're going to expand it over your space. It might change color, it might grow larger, it might be more stabilized. And when you feel that you are ready, you're going to tell these items you are charged with the power and intent of protection. Your job is to protect this home and those in it. So when you feel you're ready, go ahead and move on. Kind of re um, come back to the real world for a second. Um, you can tell it simple like that. You don't have to, if you want to come up with a fun rhyme or a spell that you saw for cleansing online or in a book, that's fine. Um, but just whatever works for you. Visualization works really well for me. Um, you can also use the solar and the lunar energies. Um, so let's see. Uh, Right now we are in the waning room, waning moon. Um, so that's really good for uh, banishing. So um, I could put this outside tonight and let it charge under the waning moon. Um, I could also put it outside in the morning and use the sun for dispelling darkness. I can put it outside tonight and forget about it and go get it tomorrow afternoon. And now it's charged with both solar and lunar energy. Um, so whatever works for you. Um, you know, there's other methods you can use. There's other crystals you can use. There's other incense you can use. But we broke, right? I don't have money to go to the store and buy all that crap. So I'm going to use my mind and I'm going to use my intent and I'm going to ask my, my guides and my guardians um, to help me cleanse and charge this. So um, now that that is out of the way, let's put it together. So now I'm going to cleanse the inside of my jar with frankincense. And then I'm going to let this incense sit off to the side while we do the assembly and then when I'm done I'm going to include that in my So I did find a few other things that I threw in there because um, I felt like it was, I just felt like it was lacking something, but I'm pretty content with what we have at this point. What the heck do we do now? Um, well, this is where your spell would go if you have one. Now this can be as simple as, um, may the items of this jar 
provide protection and safety for myself and all those who dwell in this home. Simple as that. Now, if you want to look up a protection spell and use that, go for it. But, um, oh, I also included a little um, sigil that I made in there. So, uh, just kind of to, to seal the deal. Um, speaking of sealing, now that we've done our spell, um, you can feed it. So you can um, charge it, feed it. Um, you can do that by using a candle um, or you can shake it. Shake, 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 shake. Um, you can breathe onto it. So you're breathing life into it. Um, you can also just choose to, to leave it be at this point. Um, typically, what I like to do is to um, seal it with a candle. I feel like it's just promoting more energy to it. Um, I would recommend a black candle of sorts. Um, I found this in my drawer. I didn't even know I had this. It was in the junk drawer. Um, so you can light the little tea light and then pour the wax on top. Um, if you want, you can even put your sigil on there. Um, I like these little chime candles because you can set them on top and it, I mean, it's just cute. If you don't have black, you can always use white. You can use white to substitute any color. And if you don't have a candle, that's okay. Just shake it. So I decided it might be a good idea to carve a few runes on this. You could even put the sigil you just made, if you made one. It doesn't have to be perfect, this is kind of awkward. There we go. Alright, so now we are going to attach it. Um, so if you're using a um, pillar or like a taper, a freestanding um, narrow candle, typically what I will do is I will melt the bottom. Oh, I forgot. You could also dress your candle um, with the oils. But I've already carved and placed it, so we're not going to do that. Um, if you're using a tea light, just set it on top, light it, and then when it's burnt out, you can pour the wax over the lid to seal it. So normally you would say your spell or your incantation and then light it um, as you're saying it or as you're finishing saying it. Um, again, there's no right or wrong here. It's, um, you know, you do it how, however you do it. And I don't always do all these steps, I'll be honest with you, but I want to make sure I hit all the um, basics here. So now we're going to let this um, candle melt down. Um, I think these take about two hours. So I did actually put it on a plate uh, just so we don't have wax spill everywhere in case it does fall over. It's not going to you know, get all over the table and stuff. Um, so let's talk about what to do with it now. Um, once it's done. So you can find a place on your altar for it. You can find a place on the shelf near an entryway, somewhere in your home where it's going to be prominent. Um, a lot of people like to bury them. Um, like I said earlier, a note on burying. If you are going to do that, I would avoid putting salt in it. Um, however, I would also avoid using a glass jar. They, they don't break down and I mean if this is your homestead and this is where your family is and you want to bury it by the, the front door, cool. Me personally, I don't want to leave remnants of my work around once I'm gone, once I've left this property. Um, you know, you could put this in a big flower pot next to your um, front door and plant protective herbs or something. Um, so personally, I'm just going to stick it on my altar. 
Um, I'm probably going to hang on to this one for a while. And this isn't a set it and just forget it. I mean, if you're burying it and then you're going to plant herbs on top of it, then sure, I guess you can kind of forget it. But if you're going to keep this inside where you see it every day, you're going to have to feed it. But you can melt a, a candle on it weekly, monthly, whatever feels right. Um, you can grab it and, you know, give it another breath or you can shake it. Um, just recharge it, redo the energy on it. Once this melts down, I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll find a place for it on the altar. So as you can see, my candle has burnt itself out. I do have some wax drippings here. Um, one of the reasons that I love working with candles um, with any ritual. Um, you can read how it burns, how it melts, what the flame looks like. So I had a nice steady flame the whole time, a nice bright flame, and so it, it's steady. That means it's not met with any resistance. Um, when it, it extinguished itself, the smoke came towards me, which is usually indicative of something coming towards you. The jar's energy coming towards me and my family. Um, something else, my wax drips towards the right, um, which usually represents the future, so protective energy in my future. Um, something though, see, um, it's bubbly. Um, this is called a trail of tears, and usually means that something is needed to be worked out. Um, the Trail of Tears usually has something to do with emotions, emotional baggage that you need to assess. Because, well, if you're doing a protection jar to protect you from negativity, from outside forces, but you're bringing in all the funk, you're just fighting an endless battle. And your jar is going to get tired, and it's going to get worn out, and the, the energy is going to... Right? So, um, I do have some things that I need to work on here. Um, also, it melted towards the north. The north is earth. The earth is grounding. So, I'm going to take that as I probably need to work on some of my grounding methods a little bit better. I have to work on myself and uh, promoting more positivity and not letting all the negative stuff come home with me and um, work on grounding. Sorry, you probably hear my puppy. She's playing with her rope toy. She gets very excited about it. She's a crap kid. So you probably hear her in the background. I'm sorry about that. You okay, Willow? Come here, Willow. Let's say hi to the camera, Willow. Come here. Oh, big poopy. Oh, hi. Okay. <laughs> that is the Willow. Willow, Willow, the chunky butt. And now I have slobber all over my glasses. I think I'm going to continue to feed this for the rest of the year because 2020 really needs this. So I'm going to do every month. I might change the candle colors depending on how I feel, but I'll probably stick to black and white on this one. So thanks for sticking with me. So, um, go forth and research and read and go out into your yard. And by the way, the app I use is called Plant Snap. You can take pictures of the plants in your yard and you upload it and it comes up with things that look similar. So you just go through, you figure out what you have, and then you search the metaphysical or the magical or the Wiccan or witchcraft correspondences for those items. Um, yeah, guys, all of this stuff I already had. Uh, but yeah, I'm super excited we did this. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So when you do, hey, let's make an album. I'm going to make an album, and I want you guys to post your spell jars, your protective spell jars. Now, you don't have to, okay? If, if, if you're somebody who feels that posting your work... Um, can bring negative energy or can influence the energy, don't post it. You don't have to. But those who maybe don't believe that or don't care or just want to share, show me your jars. So let's go put this on the altar. Bye guys.